You're invited to join me in my house and around my town to learn English for your real daily life. Today, you are going on a journey. First, you will join me here in my kitchen where we'll talk about important vocabulary for the kitchen. And then you'll join me outside my home in the grocery store where we go around the grocery store talking about all of the important vocabulary words, expressions, and things you might see in an American grocery store. And finally, you'll join me at the gas station as I fill up my car with gas and I walk you through those steps so that you can grow your vocabulary and just express yourself for those daily life situations. Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com and like always, I have created a wonderful free PDF worksheet for you with all of today's kitchen, grocery store, and gas station vocabulary, including every definition, sample sentence, and at the bottom of the free worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question so that you never forget what you've learned. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. All right, let's get started in my kitchen. Let's move over to the kitchen where I will be explaining a couple key items and things that you might see in the kitchen. Let's go. Welcome to my American kitchen. Today I'd like to give you a mini tour around the kitchen and I'm curious what's different from your country. We all probably have a place to cook, <laughs> but I'm sure that it looks different all around the world. So let's get started by taking a look at the place where we keep our food, the fridge. Fridges in the US kind of have a stereotype of being huge and it's true. <laughs> this is our fridge. It is very big and it's great for keeping lots of food. Because I have kids, the fridge is covered in memorabilia, things from our children, pictures. Underneath the fridge is the freezer, which you can't really see, but it is also very big. It's great for keeping lots of things. Every and two weeks or every three weeks, I buy a lot of food. So I guess this is different depending on the size of your fridge. <laughs> Beside the fridge is the oven or the stove. So here's the stove top and underneath here is the oven. But it's pretty typical in the US to have either an electric stove top like I have or a gas stove top that has a little flame and it cooks. This is what I have. There's knobs for turning it on. And over here are some other little appliances like our toaster. We have a four slice toaster. There are four people in our family, so this is very convenient. And uh, let me take you over to this side to take a look at where we wash the dishes. So fun. <laughs> Before we get to the sink, I have my electric tea kettle. I'd say that having an electric tea kettle is pretty common in most homes in the US. Over here is my sink. So this is a really typical sink in the US. It has two basins. These are the sink basins and there is hot and cold water that come out. We also have a little drinking water spigot right here. This is common but it's not always filtered it's often just cold it might be filtered a little bit more than your usual tap water that water isn't that great to me instead really excellently filtered water tastes so good uh, we also have a spray nozzle this is also really typical in the u.s right now it won't spray anything because i haven't turned on the water in the sink but if i turn on the water in the sink i can spray on this side is my husband's coffee supplies and our countertop where we do most of our food preparation and a cutting board. I have a little thing for compost. It's quite full right now, actually. I need to take it outside. But whenever we have food scraps or things like that, I can put them in that little compost container because we don't have a disposal, which is pretty common in the US, especially in modern houses. But my house is from the late 1960s. One thing that you might notice I don't have in here, and that is laundry. We have a separate laundry room. It's actually just like a big closet that has a washer and a dryer in it. You will never see a washer and a dryer visible in the kitchen. It's possible that it might be in a closet behind doors that you can't see, like a little laundry closet. These rooms are always separate and that's just 
how it is. <laughs> uh, there's one more appliance I'd like to show you, but I'm gonna need to bring you down here to show you. In almost every kitchen in the US, you will find a lovely dishwasher. Oh, I love the dishwasher so much and I feel so grateful for this, but it's very typical in the US. I think you would be very hard pressed to find a house in the US that does not have a dishwasher. Beside the dishwasher is our trash can and we have a recycling bin out of view. Uh, in the US, most places, most cities offer recycling, but usually you just throw all of your recycling in one bin and you don't need to sort it. So you don't need to sort glass and paper. I know some countries you have to sort colors of glass. There's a really strict process. I'm curious, is your kitchen different than mine? Let me know. Well, thank you for joining me in the kitchen. Let's go outside the home to the grocery store. In the US, we say grocery store more than supermarket. So let's head there and see what you can learn. All right, first things first, we are gonna go through the parking lot and get a cart. I call this just a cart, but some people call it a shopping cart. And here in the South where I live, people call it a buggy, a buggy. Our first stop is the free fruit snack for kids. This is Freddie's favorite thing to do in the grocery store, so I sure hope they have something for him. Look at this, Freddie. Yeah. You want a banana? Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you open it? Maybe you need some help? <gasps> wow. Hold it down there. <gasps> Yummy! <laughs> All right, let's go get some stuff from the produce section. Notice that I said the word produce section. This just means where you can buy fruits and vegetables. But let's pay attention to the pronunciation of that word produce. The emphasis is at the beginning. Produce. Produce. There's another word which is a verb. To produce something. I produce one YouTube video every week. Here the emphasis is at the end. Produce. I produce a video. This is different than the produce section. We're in the produce section right now and let's see what's gonna happen next. Who knows? It could be anything. <laughs> hmm. Should I get the single ones or should I get the bag? Get a bag, we can make some sparkling water. Well, let's see. There's 94 cents for this and there's one, two, three, four, five, six in here for $5. It's a better deal, but they're in a bag. Look at this. What do you oh. think? Should we get lemons? Yeah, let's get some lemons. When you're buying produce, you have two options. You can buy loose produce, like the broccoli that I bought, or you can buy bagged produce, like the lemons that I bought, or here, like the potatoes. And really, there are so many to choose from. It's pretty unbelievable the type of options that we have these days. I feel so lucky to have these options. As we go through the bulk section, where you can buy items in bulk, you'll see these bananas in a bag that are on sale. I want you to know the difference between on sale and for sale. These bananas are on sale. That means there's a discount. It's on sale. But really, every item in the grocery store is for sale. For sale means that you can buy it. There's no special discount, there's no special price, it's just for sale. Here we are at the deli counter. At the deli counter, you can order freshly sliced lunch meat. You might say, I'd like half a pound of turkey, please, or I'd like a pound of cheddar cheese, please. We decided to not order anything today because there was only one person working early in the morning and the wait was too long. But that's all right. Let's move on to the next thing. In the bakery, you can get some freshly baked donuts, bread, or cakes. Because Freddie is turning two soon at the end of March, we've been talking about cakes a lot recently. He's very excited about getting a birthday cake or cupcakes. Let's see. What cake would you like for your birthday? This. 
This one? Yeah. This one or this one? This one. This one? This one? This one? Yeah. This one? Oh, the one with the cereal all over it? <laughs> that looks exciting. Mmm. You know what would be really good? Yeah. You get some hummus. You know some hummus? That's bell pepper hummus. So it's yummy. Yum is ready. Thank you. In the grocery store, you have the option to get fresh fish or frozen fish. But watch out because usually the fresh fish has been previously frozen. You can also get fresh cuts of meat or you can get pre-packaged meat. If you want to get a fresh cut of meat, you could say, I'd like two pounds of ground beef, please. This is a really polite and common statement that you can use. Now I'm going down an aisle. Notice this pronunciation, aisle. The S is silent. Go down an aisle. Or you can say, it's on aisle three. Great pronunciation. If I go, if I go. Crackers. Are you excited about crackers? Crackers. <laughs> All right, we gotta get some pretzels. I want to get this kind. Hold it. You want to hold it? Ew. Okay. And I'm gonna get this one. That's our special snack. Take it. <laughs> Good job. That's our special snack. We don't get many treats like chips and stuff, but pretzels. We love pretzels. Always gotta get pretzels. Yep. I'm walking past a case of frozen meat, and on the other side is an end cap. An end cap is a shelf on the end of an aisle. The chips are on the end cap. We're gonna get some poster board for Theo. Me! And for Freddy. <laughs> okay, you need some poster board too? <laughs> is it down here? Oh, let's go down here. We need some poster board. Oh, look at this. Yes. Next, I'm going to be walking to the dairy section. The dairy section includes milk products like milk, yogurt, cheese, and also for some reason, eggs are included in this. The dairy section is refrigerated. There are refrigerated items in this section. Let's take a look at this pronunciation. Refrigerated. Refrigerated. That final T is going to sound like a D in American English because it's surrounded by vowels. This is very common for American English. I'm going to say the word again and I want you to try to say it with me. Refrigerated. Refrigerated. I'm in the refrigerated section getting some refrigerated items. I hope that this helps. I know this word is tricky, but you can do it. All right, let's go get yogurt. Where's the yogurt? yogurt. That way. That way. That's right, it's that way. That way. Do you think we need to buy any eggs? Yeah. We, we actually don't need to buy. We don't need to buy any eggs because our chickens make so many eggs. We are looking for plain whole milk yogurt. Mm, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. I don't want vanilla yogurt. Hmm. Plain whole milk yogurt, but this is so expensive. Do we need yogurt that bad, Freddie? Yogurt. Okay. We need yogurt that bad. Okay. I know, but I know. <laughs> okay. Now it's time for a little splurge. A splurge is something you don't need. Maybe it's a little too expensive, but you really want it. I'm gonna get some sparkling water with a little bit of fruit juice in it. It's so tasty. Let's talk a little bit about alcohol. 
In the state where I live, North Carolina, you can buy wine and beer in the grocery store. This is a very simple thing to do, but if you want to buy hard liquor, so this is considered like rum or vodka, you need to go to a special store called a liquor store. Here in the South where I live, we call these an ABC store, but you need to go to this specialized store if you want to buy something else not just wine and beer. But for now, I'm not gonna get any of it. I need to get some more gardening gloves. Believe it or not. Oh, you actually some? Yeah, mine have holes in all the fingers. The point of gardening gloves is to keep your hands safe, but if they have holes in all the fingers, and this will save me a trip to Lowe's. Before we check out, there's one key word that I haven't talked about yet, and we need to talk about it. Can you guess what it is? It's the word grocery, grocery store. That's where I'm at and I'm buying groceries. There's two different pronunciations for this and it's just a regional difference or a personal preference. You can say grocery with an S sound in the middle. Grocery, grocery. But for me, I say grocery with a sh sound in the middle grocery store, grocery store. Both of these options are correct, and it just depends on what you feel the most comfortable saying. So you could say, I'm at the grocery store, or I'm at the grocery store. I'm buying groceries, or I'm buying groceries. Both of these are beautiful, very natural, and it's the most common expression that you're gonna hear in the US when we talk about a store where you buy food. It's the grocery store. Now it's time to check out. We can use this word as a noun or a verb. Let's check out, or let's go to the checkout. You can also say the checkout counter. Let's go to the checkout counter. I need to buy the things that I put in my cart. Let's check out. It's time to check out. At the checkout counter, watch out because there are a lot of snacks and junk food waiting for you. The grocery store wants you to splurge and buy these things. For me, I try to avoid them. It's always unhealthy, not really a good choice, but this is here to make a last minute purchase. I wanna know, in your country, are there a lot of snacks and junk food options waiting at the checkout? I think this is kind of common around Around the world, but let me know in the comments if this happens in your country. Now I'm asking the kind checkout lady if I have her permission to film while I'm checking out. I wanted to give you this experience to see the final step at the grocery store. Well, I forgot all of my bags today, so I can <laughs> I can help to check out too. Um, let's do paper. Now all of the items are going down the conveyor belt and the checkout lady is scanning them while I put them in my bag. I usually bring my own bags, but this day I was so focused on filming I totally forgot. So I chose to get paper bags. I can compost the paper bags in my garden, but you might choose to get a plastic bag because you can reuse them as a trash bag in your house. It's time to pay for all of these groceries. I'm scanning my membership card so that I can get a few discounts. And she asked me if I want to use cash or credit, or she might say cash or card, and you can choose which one. Thank you, thanks you too, I appreciate your help. <laughs> yes, bye. bye. <laughs> Now I go out through the automatic doors, like magic, and load the groceries in the car. I load the groceries in the car, and then at home, I will unload the groceries. Now that we've bought all of the groceries that we need, it's time to fill up the gas tank. <laughs> Join me as I go to the gas station and fill up the car and talk about everything you need to learn along the way. Let's go. Before we go to the gas station, there's a couple expressions I wanna share with you. The first one is my gas gauge. So on my dashboard, there is a gauge that shows me E, 
to F, and that means empty to full. Right now, the gas gauge is closer to E, so that's why we're heading to the gas station. And usually, if you have a somewhat modern car, <laughs> if your car is low on gas, you will see a fuel light or a gas light appear on your dashboard, and that's a little warning to let you know, get some gas soon so that you don't run out. There's two idioms we can use to talk about my situation right now. We could say, I'm running on empty, or I'm on E, and that's referring to empty. Now we use this to talk about the car, I'm running on empty. That means I have hardly any gas in my car, it's just fumes coming out, I better get to a gas station soon. But we can also use this for your personal life. Let's say that you've been working really hard, you've been staying up late, you've also been taking care of your family, you're exhausted, you have no energy left. You can say, oh, guys, I'm running on empty, I'm on E, I just need to take a nap. Can you guys just chill for a moment so that I can go to the other room and take a 15 minute nap? I'm running on empty. <laughs> so this is great for talking about your car or for yourself. All right, let's head to the gas station where I will introduce you to some more great daily life English expressions. All right, here we are at the gas station. In the US, we call this a gas station and there's usually a little convenience store where you can buy little snacks and things like that. Now, I wanna let you know that there's different terms we use for gas that you will hear all around the world and in the US. You've heard me say a few times gas. Well, this is not talking about steam. This is short for gasoline. So we put gasoline in the car and in the US we shorten that to gas. But you could also say fuel. I need to put some fuel in my car. And there's a specific type of fuel called diesel fuel that in the US is not common for ordinary cars like what I have but big trucks, construction vehicles, 18-wheelers, uh, these type of big tractor trailers, they use diesel fuel. And I wanna let you know that in the US, we do not use the word petrol to talk about what you put in your car for fuel, but this is more common in Europe and in the UK. So if you hear someone in another English speaking country say, I need to put some petrol in my car, they're talking about the fuel, the liquid that goes in the car. But here we call it simply gas. Now that I've pulled up to the pump, I need to open the fuel door. Usually there's a little button or a latch down here to open the fuel door and I'm gonna start choosing which grade of fuel I want. So come on to the other side of the car and let's start. Here in the US, we have self-service gas stations. That means you have to pump the gas yourself. But a long time ago, they used to have full service gas stations where there was someone who worked here who would pump the gas for you. But I have to do it myself, and that includes paying for the gas. You have a couple options. For me, I'm gonna pay at the pump, but if you have cash, you need to pay inside. For me, I've never done this, I think, because it's so much more convenient to pay with a card at the pump. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna choose to pay with my card, so I will choose the option for debit. You could also choose credit if you want. I need to insert and remove my card and then I will have to choose which grade I want. But we're gonna let it process for a moment. I'm gonna add my pin, which will keep my card information safe. It's authorizing, do I want a receipt? Nope, I don't need a receipt. And now I'm going to need to choose which grade I want. All right, so I already put in my payment information. Now I need to take out the pump and choose which grade. I'm going to choose 87, that's the lowest, it's the cheapest also, but it's also what my car needs. And I need to put it in the gas pump. So I'm going to take off the gas cap and insert the gas pump into the gas tank, turn it on, and you can see here that it is starting to add gas to my car and the price is going up and up and up. <laughs> Here in the US, we generally have cheaper fuel than other countries, especially Europe, but you know, 
it still adds up after some time. All right, now that the gas is pumping, let me tell you some basic vocabulary here. This is the gas pump. It's the piece that I put into my gas tank, and the tank is the term that we use for that container that holds the gas in your car. And after I finish pumping gas, that's the verb we use to pump gas, uh, I will need to close the gas cap so that everything is sealed in the car and it's not a flammable hazard. <laughs> All right, my gas just finished, so I'm going to put the nozzle back. Very important step. <laughs> and I will also close my gas cap, make sure it's locked, close the gas door, and that's about it. There's some other things that you can do at the gas station if you would like. For example, you could use a squeegee and clean off your windshield. You could throw away some trash. A lot of uh, gas stations also have an air pump. Sometimes they're free, sometimes they're a dollar, <laughs> but you can add some air to your tires if you need to, or you could go into the convenience store and pick up some snacks if you feel like it. So are you curious how much it cost me to fill up my car with gas? Well, here in the US, we use gallons. That might not be the same for you, but I put about 15 gallons of gas in my car and it cost me $46. For me, I don't drive an awful lot, so this will last several weeks, but it's still an expense that you have to pay if you want to get around in the US. Well, thank you so much for joining me in my home and around town for this English lesson. Now, I have a question for you. Do you have a car? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet with all of today's kitchen vocabulary, grocery store vocabulary, and gas station vocabulary, sample sentences, definitions, and Vanessa's challenge question that you can answer so that you never forget what you've learned. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. But wait, do you want more? I recommend watching this video next where you will join me in the bathroom to learn about some important bathroom vocabulary, including some strange but common words to use to talk about the toilet. Hmm, join me there to find out.